All right, check this out. You guys are back on the episode of Blue Devil Reactions. And what we have going on today is something different. Now, look, every day we've been experimenting to see what uh, you guys like to watch. Uh, and today's video is panhandlers caught driving rental car traveling around town to solicit cash. Uh, now, let me say something. The reason I picked this video, not only did it pop up on my feed, but I could relate to this. You know, I got a story to tell from a few days ago, uh, and I will tell it in the middle of the video. Plus, I'm always giving money to panhandlers and uh, homeless people, right? Less fortunate. But before we get into this video, you already know, to those that are new on Blue Devil Reactions, make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you guys like the video, dislike the video, and most importantly, comment down below. Let me know if you like what I'm doing or whether you don't. And truthfully comment whatever that way you know uh i know whether you like this video or you don't like this video plus it keeps the uh it keeps us in the algorithm and other than that we got another page hater world uncensored on hater world uncensored we go live every day from uh 8 p.m to 10 p.m daily monday through thursday uh we read the chat and we do live reactions hater world uncensored uh, and also visit our main page, The Hater World, more serious podcast, uh, South Sider Reactions, just a little bit more, uh, more, uh, you know, toned down, I would say, you know. Uh, but with all that being said and no more to be said, let's watch this video. Panhandlers caught driving rental car traveling around town to solicit cash. So with no further ado, Let's get you guys a uh, Blue Devil reaction. Let's get it. Some areas who may not be... People are in the spirit of giving. But there is a group of panhandlers targeting some areas who may not be as needy as you think. CBS 2 investigative reporter David Goldstein took his hidden cameras to find out. He's here now. <laughs> yeah, Pat and Paul will show you what we found in just a moment. Now, these people stand at shopping malls with small children holding signs... Hold on, this video is old. It is like six, seven years old, but that don't matter because all of this still happens to this day. And if it's happened to you, leave a comment below. Now, let's rewind this a little bit. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, Pat and Paul will show you what we found in just a moment. Now, these people stand at shopping malls with small children holding signs asking for money. We wanted to know, are they down and out or professional panhandlers? Job. From the San Fernando Valley. Please help, I lost my job. To the Santa Clarita Valley. I'm leaving at cars. Our undercover cameras captured similar looking groups of panhandlers with children, some small enough to even be breastfeeding, all holding signs claiming to be down and out. But are they as needy as they seem? You're driving a rental car? Maybe not. Here is a second. Gypsies. These are gypsies. Listen, gypsies got a lot of scams, a lot of scams. I don't blame them for the for the uh, hustle, but it's not a hustle, right? This is getting over on people. One thing is to like have like a skill that you're offering. Another thing is to try to scam people. This is scamming people. Okay, let's go. Family. We've watched them outside shopping areas all over town. The signs are very similar. Please help. Lost my job. I have three kids, four kids, and it goes on and on and on. Residents believe they're all working together. It is a Let me give you one instant real quick before I get into the other story I want to tell. One time I was at Target and I had an old work truck, right? The paint was chipping off of the work truck. Uh, it was a 2006 Silverado, right? And I thought it was a piece of crap, but it ended, I ended up fixing it and people loved it. But at that time, uh, the paint was chipping off. It was red. I would drive it around town because it was my work truck. I really didn't care. You know, you could kick it. I could care less, right? Uh, and some gypsy guy walks up to me and says, Hey, I'll take those dents out of your vehicle and I'll make your truck shiny again. I'll make the paint pop, right? I got my kids and my wife in the car. And that's really what got me, the wife and the kids, right? Uh, I'm just trying to get some food. And I said, you know what? Go for it, bro. I'm going to go inside the store for an hour, have it ready when I come out. 
bro, at the minute this guy told me, oh no, I'll be done in five minutes. That was a red flag. When he said five minutes, it was a red flag. I'm like, dog, it's going to take you five minutes to take the dents out of my truck. It got like 10 dents, right? And to shine the whole thing up, right? And that, that, that was a red flag. But I said, all right, cool. Give me 20 then. I'll hurry up. And I'm over here trying to look out for this man. The guy goes, give me your number. I'll call you when you come. I'll call you when I'm done so you come out. All right, fuck it. That works. And I'm thinking this guy knows what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. So then I come out. He calls me. I come out the store. The truck looks good. The dents are not fully all the way out. He took one one or two out. He had like a plunger thing, right? And I'm like, all right, you know, it looks cool. And then he tries to hit me with like, oh, it's going to cost you like 85 bucks. I go, 85 bucks? What the fuck did you do? Like, bro, right? Like, And he goes, yeah, $85. I go, look, my guy. We're going to make this very simple. I'm going to give you 30 bucks. You can take it. You can leave it. And he's trying to argue with me that he did all this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, I'm going to give you 35 bucks. You take it or leave it. Well, he took it all pissed off, right? All right, cool, whatever. A couple of days later, bro, I'm cleaning my truck out. And he left his spray bottle in the in the truck in the back, you know, in the in the, in the the cabin or whatever. Bro, tell me why it was gasoline in that fucking spray bottle. I smell it fucking gas this cocksucker got me right i see him a week later at a ga- different gas station around the same area he walks up to me and tries to sell me the same scam these guys scam so many people they forget who they scam you feel what i'm saying uh and he walked up to me trying to sell me the same shit and i go look my boy I'm only going to tell you one time. You got 10 seconds to get up off me. If you don't, you're going to regret not listening to me. What are you talking about? All I'm going to tell you is that you already scammed my truck. Scam me by cleaning my truck. I'm not going to tell you again. You got 10 seconds, homie. Right? That fool splits. Never seen him again, but he was a gypsy. Right? Uh, and that's what they do. They got little scams like that. You know, yeah, it made the truck look good. For a couple of days, and it did take the like the chip the the it wasn't even paint that was chipping off. It was the clear coat, right? It was the clear coat. But then what happens is that with that gas later, it'll make your truck dry. Like you can't reshine it or none of, none of that, right? So he got me, he got me, you know. Uh, so beware, beware. But let's go. Well organized group, no question about it. And they're fed up. Not panhandling in Santa Clarita Valley. We don't want you here. I'm tired of paying for your damn car note. Get out of here. Here's the Facts. Child. Over a series of weeks during the summer, Facts. our undercover cameras followed these panhandlers. 90 degrees, according to the thermometer in my car. This is and what got me. He's got the kids out there. Two infant kids, 90 degrees out. Sometimes trying to get people's attention. She waves to everybody. But mostly getting their sympathy and their... All right, I got I got done up a second time. But you know what? I don't even consider getting got because I look out for people regardless. You know, homies, homegirls, family. If a family hits me up, like the other day, somebody hit me up for like some money and I sent more than what they asked for. That's just me. Like, that's just the way I am, right? This lady that's laying there on the floor, I was at a Bank of America, which I'm going to tell you guys right now, don't use Bank of America. It's the most garbage bank you can use. I like BBVA, all right? Well, whatever. I'm at the Bank of America getting some bread out, right? And I'm and I've said this before on other podcasts. I'm the game banger. Tattoos on my face, on my hand. I'm like the least person you would think that would help anybody, right? You got dudes in suits and ties, regular white dudes, working class Mexicans, all at the ATM. There's a lady with a baby, right? And she on the floor in between. There's three ATMs. This lady in between two of them, right? So you have you're lit, she's literally in the way of everybody, and she right there all dirty and disgusted with a baby, homie. And everybody passing by by her, right? And she's crying, money, I need uh, food for my baby. So I give the bitch a bill. Here you go. Boom, a bill. 
bro, tell me why everyone looks at me like, like, they just look at me because they never expected a, a guy like me to, but I'm looking at them like, you fucking bums, you see a lady right here and you can't look out for the lady and the kid, you know, bums, I'm looking at them like bums, right? Well, tell me why that same day later on, I see the lady all dressed up looking fancy, bro, down the street, dog, <laughs> dog, I got, I got, I got taken, but look it, I don't look at things like that, I look at things like, look, it could be anybody, it could be you, it could be me, whatever they decide to do with the money, whether it's smoke it up, buy food, whatever it is, I don't care, I did a good deed, and that's all that matters, right, I'll tell you the third time right now, money well, they're getting in this van now but as we watched we saw a pattern like this family finishing their panhandling then getting into a late model suv the young girl making sure they didn't leave their sign behind same sign or this group that panhandled outside the fallbrook center now they move to uh westfield to panga only to drive to another mall a few miles away oh you lost your job Oh my gosh. Our undercover producer approached this woman and daughter who. Alright, see the little kid in the bottom? That's the worst, bro. That is the worst. That pisses me off so much. That pisses me off so much that you don't know how angry I feel for that m mom, right? This Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> I was at the mall. I actually even saw a Hater World supporter salute my boy. You know who he is. He caught me in the mall with my nephews. My nephews were picking out some clothes. A uh, 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 homie passed by and recognized me and shook my hand. Salute, right? Well, when I left, there was a family outside the mall asking for money, right? It was the dad, the mom, a little girl like this one, probably like 13, 14, and a little boy, like six or seven. And the little girl was standing there bored, just looking around. The little kid was playing with rocks. And the dad and the mom had a sign just like this. And I was with my nephew, and I told them, look, this is a scam. They got me before, they ain't going to get me again, right? I go, it's embarrassing that the dad has to put their family through this, right? The little girl has to go to school knowing that her friends saw her panhandling. That's what gets me so pissed off. That they are ruining these little kids' lives before they even start their life. You know, they're putting these little kids through misery, bro. And embarrassment all over the dad's bum ass that can't get up and go to work. Uh, you know, you don't know how much I wanted to get off the car and literally punch the dad in the mouth. You know, because my nephew was the same age as that little girl. And all I kept thinking was like, damn, imagine my nephew out there, you know, panhandling, you know, for money. And I told my nephew, this is why you got to be grateful that you got a great life. You got to be grateful that you got what you have. Even if it's a little bit, you got to be grateful because there's kids out there that are being dragged around and used as props to get money. You know, this little kid doesn't want to be outside. You know, it was hot. It was like a hundred and some. Little kid don't want to be outside, you know, looking at all the cars and, you know, embarrassing. Like, they want to be inside chilling. Like, nobody should put kids through this, my boy, at all. You know, it, I, I wanted to punch that dude in the face. But I said, you know what, let's just mind our business because this could turn ugly. You know, but it's a sad situation. You know, it's, it's really the parents that already got a scam going on and they look at it like why work why do we need to work when we can make y'all like bandits 100 bucks a day 30 days that's three racks you know guaranteed that they make more than that but when they involve kids bro who admitted that she and i didn't give them nothing she's a regular i'm thinking three three days uh, in the week she said she's homeless and looking for work what kind of work do you do? Cleaning. Cleaning? Like yeah. house cleaning? But the woman said she didn't have a phone, so we couldn't get in touch with her, yeah. and she didn't have transportation. You didn't have a car, you didn't have a car right? No. And listen, 
this is the worst part, right? Gypsies. Not to disrespect the culture, because I don't even know if that's a culture. I just I was told that these people are gypsies, and I've been running with that. So somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But the fucked up part about it is that they're coming here and they're really abusing of the people because they got scams. They sell fake gold. They sell uh they, they do little scams at the pump with gas. Now begging for money. But people always cry about the, the, the raza when they come here to work. Right? Work. Slave away. Even though I got a story I'll, I'll give you guys right now, maybe, about actually this Sunday I gave up Paisa some money too. But let's go. Oh, the bus. That's, oh, okay, the bus takes you. But a few minutes later, we saw her walking with the man in the red hat and they got into this car, not the bus. She ended up outside of Ralph's around the corner, sign in hand, when we went up to talk with her. David Goldstein with CBS 2 News. Oh, no, so please. You've been, we've seen yeah, these she signs knows it's all a scam. over town. Are you guys part of some organized ring? No, no, no. What are you doing? Are you, are you really homeless? Are you really out of work? Yes, you, I'm you, homeless. You told our undercover producer you yes. took a bus here, but we saw you get in the car with a gentleman earlier. Oh, I'm so sorry, yeah. She hustled away. And finally, we saw this mother and son panhand. Listen, when I was young, I was probably like 14. I had a neighbor, a little white boy, right? He was older than me. He was like a, like a little rocker dude. No gothic, all black, big old chains. I still remember him, right? And he lived like two doors down to me, and we lived in some nice ass apartments, right? Like nice ass apartments. And I would always go to his house. We would smoke weed. He had a nice ass apartment, and it was just his mother and him. And every day he would come back with loads of money, bro. Damn, bro, where do you get that money from? And you know, being small, 14, 13, you're trying to get put up on game. I want some money too, right? And he's like, I panhandle. I make over 100 bucks a day just asking people for money. Bro, this motherfucker was like 20 probably. Damn, that young. I remember I thought like, hey, I can't ask for money. Like, it was never in me like to go out there and ask, beg for money. Like, nah, hell nah. But I always used to be like, damn, this fool. This fool out there getting people at this age. So believe me when I tell you, these little kids that you see in the video, it's fucked up, but they grow up to do the same as their parents handling outside a Walmart only to get into this car that came back registered to Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Is that right, really, to, to wow. get out asking for money? Bum ass and, and you're driving a rental car? I mean, you're driving a 2016 new car and you're out asking for money. You guys have the same sign of all these other people that have been out here. Is that some kind of ring that's going on or something? You think they're running a scam? You know which other one's a scam too? You know when people have the sign that says somebody died and they're trying to pay for the funeral? That one's a scam too. I've seen them all the time. Uh, and people donate. That one's a scam too. It would appear to me, yeah. LAPD Detective Gil S. Contreras looked at our undercover pictures. He used to work the Bunko Forgery Unit and came in contact with similar groups in the past. From your experience with these people, is it an organized crime? It's almost to the point where you may call them a disorganized organization, if you will, where they probably sometimes, uh, like any type of organized theft group, um, where they will um, coordinate with each other as to who's going to take what position, yep. what spot. He says it appears they're one of a number of groups who travel around the country preying on the heartstrings of people to make money. And he has doubts about their unemployment status. For many people, this is their job. I mean, on the other side of the shopping center right now, there's another family with almost the same sign. Where are you going? Why are you running away? Now, police say the panhandlers aren't breaking any laws. It's not illegal to ask people for money, but they say if you're in the spirit of giving, it might be best to give. Listen, I'll tell you guys another one real quick. This Saturday, I was at the swap meet. I go to like the flea market sometimes. You know, sometimes I'll need, a, I'll need some stuff that they don't have like at regular stores. Like, what I go buy this week? What did I buy? Oh, I was looking for a small table. I was looking for, like, a little small table. I didn't find it. And there was, a, there was you know, it's full of Mexicans and shit, you know. 
And the paisa walks up to me and he goes, hey, carnal, can I uh, bother you for some money? I just got here from Mexico and we have no money to eat. He was all beat. So his story was true because I know how this works. They, gained, they came here and they got off and ran on the coyote, right? The person that helped them get here didn't get paid and this fool ran off. And I know because it's happened to me. I've had illegals run off on me, right? Only a few. So I sat there and I was like, man, I don't want to give this fool no money because I know what he did. The homie that brought him ended up not getting paid because this fool jumped off the whip or whatever and got away. So now the homie that brought him didn't get paid and this fool out here asking for money because he in the middle of nowhere. But I was like, you know what? Homie got to eat regardless. And I gave him some money. But that one's a little bit more understandable. Even though it, it hits home. But listen... Listen, I don't say don't give people money. Do what you want. If your heart tells you to give, give. As, as long as you do a good deed, that's all that matters. But don't be fooled. There's a lot of people out there that are just praying on the weak. Uh, with that being said and nothing else uh, nothing else to be said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was long. It was different. And it, ha it did have a lot of personal stories. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys ever had this issue. Or if you guys can relate to any of my stories. Uh, and with that, be, with that being said, once again, this is an episode of Blue Devil Reactions. And we gone. Blue Devil Gang, gang, gang.